welcome everybody. Coach's Corner Week Four. My name is Matt D'Angelo. Today we are going to be talking about regeneration. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna hit present. Once I gotta minimize this real quick. And okay, so regen. Here we go. Regeneration or regen. Like the arrow doesn't work. Oh, there we are. So today's agenda, we're going to go over different types of recovery, sleep, a little Q&A, and then let's roll. So I'm going to start with this. Work plus rest equals success. If you can take one thing out of the presentation today, it is this. It is important to let your body rest. It'll help your body recover a little bit more, and you really have to listen to your body. This is something that I have done as I have aged getting into your 30s, you have to listen. You can't just push, 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 push. Oh, I don't need to take a day off. You do, because you're going to get the best results out of it. Work plus rest equals success. All right, let's start with types of recovery. So here's a lovely picture here that we have of uh, the MMA team working out at our headquarters. So active recovery or AKA regen. So different types of regen would be stretching, whether that's dynamic or static. So similar to what we, how we start every class, a little movement prep, that's good, maybe about five to 10 minutes or so. You'll see in another site or another slide, um, kind of a time length. Uh, but yeah, any kind of dynamic or static stretch, especially what is sore, hamstrings are good, calves are good, glutes are good. Um, just help to release and stretch those muscles out, followed by massage, uh, either self-massage or with, a massage therapist. We will be doing some foam rolling today. That is a great tool. Um, if you have a trigger point ball, a cross ball, tennis ball, golf ball, um, <clears throat> those really help also with massage or see a massage therapist. That's always good. Maybe get in a sports massage or just any kind of massage. Also very good for the mind as well. Number three would be hydrotherapy. So a cold plunge or contrast. A uh, cold tub, if you are taking a cold plunge, should be a nice toasty Temperature of 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So just enough to kind of shock the system um, and let those, those muscles recover. Again, in another slide, we'll kind of go over time length, but it shouldn't be more than 15 minutes. And then last but not least, uh, a little active rest. So a yellow zone. So we have three different zones, red being the most intense, all out effort for about five to 10 seconds, green zone being consistent, so about 30 to a minute. And then we have yellow zone, which is about 10, 15 plus minutes. So a great um, source of yellow ESD would be just going for a hike. You can go for uh, a nice bike ride, uh, you, maybe just a, a light jog if you want to jog or hit the treadmill for about 20 minutes, that'll be good. But hiking is good, even golfing. I like to spend my weekends golfing. So Saturdays, uh, that's kind of my active recovery. I usually walk like every golfer should in how you're supposed to. No need to take a golf cart. Uh, and that's a great source of active recovery. Just lets the body flush out. Also good for the mind. Moving on, we're going to go to a little passive recovery. So this is AKA rest. This is one of the, my favorite pictures. I love getting the weekly updates from The Rock. This is his cheat meal. There's probably about 55 pieces of sushi there. I didn't count, but you know, give or take a few. And he eats all of that. So it's important to, uh, I'm going to touch base on nutrition. We'll start with that. It's important to eat. So if you are sore, food is going to help your body recover. It's also going to give you fuel to get to, so you can perform in the next workout. Now, number one there is sleep. We're going to touch uh, a little bit more. I'm going to expand a little bit more on this on the next slide, but actually in two slides. But it is very important to sleep. Sleep helps your body recover, helps your mind recover to prepare you for the next workout. And the number three there is psychological unload, breathing exercises. Maybe you do a little Wim Hof breathing, meditation and or visualization. Um, again, just helps get your mind clear, helps your mind and body recover there. So passive recovery, a little rest, always good. So a sample regen day, this is a lovely cold plunge that uh, looks a little bit colder than about 50 to 55. That's probably shooting around the 40 degrees, which uh, that's a no for me, but you know, uh, for a little bit warmer. So uh, 
a sample regen day should consist of post-workout fuel. So getting some kind of protein, some kind of carbs to replenish what you just burned off. Also water, water is very, very important. Make sure you rehydrate from all that lost, uh, the lost sweat and potassium and electrolytes that you lost during the workout. Uh, a little self massage. So about five to 10 minutes of foam rolling here and then five to 10 minutes of static or dynamic stretching. And then last but not least would be optional if you have the resources, a little cold plunge, about 10 to 12 minutes there. And like I said, the water should be about 50 to 55 degrees. Uh, when it's cold here in the winter time, no need to add ice, just put slip on the club, tub, excuse me, to cold water, should fill, fill it up nicely and just uh, let that water do the, do the work. If you do have a source of ice and you wanna add some ice in there to cool it down a little bit, good luck. Um, or if you have a pool nearby here in you know sunny sunny San Diego that's not heated, jump on in. My parents have a pool. I've used that before. 50 in 55 degrees, it does the job for about 10 12 minutes. All right, moving on to one of my favorite topics. I love to discuss that I am a big fan of sleep. Sleep helps. Sleep is key. So the importance of sleep. Sleep is the single most effective thing we can do to re reset our brain and body health each day. Dr. Matthew Walker, he is a neuroscientist at Cal Berkeley, um, one of the best, most educational podcasts that I've listened to with Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan Experience. I think it came out in 2018, so three years ago. I re-listened to it last year, and it's just mind-blowing. He also has a book out, so if you're more into books, um, take a look. I don't have the name of the book off the top of my head, but... Just Google Dr. Matthew Walker and uh, you can uh, get his sleep book. This lovely picture is my parents' dog. His name is Koa. Just, you know, he's resting. He's letting his body recover here. What a good little boy until he starts to come around and just, you know, being a two-year-old pup. Uh, main, main thing here, it's important you need to get seven to nine hours. Second thing, be consistent with that seven to nine hours especially when you go to bed, timing a bed. Um, one of the things that I took away from Dr. Matthew Walker is going to bed at the same time. Yes, weekends, you don't have work. It's still important to try to go to bed around the same time that you go to bed during the week. So if it's, you know, if you're going to bed at 10 o'clock Monday through Friday, same thing on weekends, just it helps your body and mind kind of adjust and get on that um, internal clock, you know, all that good stuff. Why do we need sleep? So sleep helps memory processing and storage. It helps boost problem solving ability. So you're sharp at work. It helps with muscle growth and repair. Muscle growth and repair work plus rest equals success. Restoration and recovery. And then it helps with hormone production, growth hormone, thyroid hormones, and appetite regulation. Turns out that another thing that uh, Dr. Walker talked about was if you get uh, less sleep, it, Five, five to seven hours, you are going to crave worse foods. You're going to want that donut. You're going to want that cookie. You're going to want that cake. You're going to want these worse foods because uh, your appetite isn't getting regulated and you're going to eat uh, sporadically throughout the day. Um, if you struggle with sleep, a couple things to, to, to try out, a couple things to try out. Turn off electronics one hour before bed. Get off that phone. Okay, maybe turn the TV off an hour before bed. Reading a book 15 to 20 minutes before bed helps your mind, obviously not focusing unless you have a Kindle on an electronic and, you know, works your mind out a little bit. Now, if you can, this is a lot more difficult for people who don't have, you know, central air. But if you can set the temperature in your room to 67 degrees, that is the ideal Sleeping degrees, that's what, again, that's what Dr. Walker talked about. Um, so if you're ever in a hotel, 67 degrees, first thing you should do, that's what I do. Uh, and then try to control your breath. If, if you can, do a little meditation or some breath work before going to bed that'll help just relax your body and uh, get ready to tackle some sleep, tackle the pillow. And then, like I mentioned, the Joe Rogan podcast with Dr. Matthew Walker, or you can uh, search for his book. It is very, very uh, good read, very educational, and you don't realize how important sleep is until, oh, I didn't realize it until I listened to that. All right, moving on, flying through this. Any questions? Any questions at all?
No questions, no questions. Okay, if there are no questions, let's roll. So if you do have your foam roller, okay, I got mine. I'm gonna adjust the camera here. We're gonna do, uh, we are going to roll in three different areas. And then we're gonna do a couple stretches just so we get the most out of it. If you think of questions while we're rolling or while we're stretching, uh, we will come back here and we can discuss those before we let you go. All right, I'm gonna get up and take all this stuff out of my pockets. Adjust the camera here. I'm gonna grab my foam roller coming on the ground. So if you don't have a foam roller and you have some kind of hard water bottle, okay, so I have a metal water bottle like so, you can also use this. I will be using the foam roller today. So the first thing we're gonna do Let's go. We're gonna so we're gonna target three areas. We're gonna do the calves, both calves, both glutes, and then the, the thoracic spine, so the middle of the back. Um, let's start with the right calf. So I'm gonna start with my right leg here, right uh, the bottom of the calf, right above the, the Achilles. Okay. If you want to add a little more pressure, you can cross the leg over. If this uh, is enough pressure, that's okay. Just leave it right next to it. Okay, so I'm gonna cross over. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna press up from my hands, which are right by my bottom. Press up and I'm slowly just gonna roll back along. Okay, Ro uh, moving side to side, left and right. And just slowly go work from the bottom all the way up to the top. If you wanna start on the inside, okay, you can start on the inside and kind of go up the calf and then out into the soleus and then right back down. So or you can just start on the outside, whatever is your preference, feel free and do that. I'm gonna start inside, slowly working side to side, and then just going right up the old calf. You are a runner, where you jump rope a lot. This should feel very excellent. So just continuing to breathe here, okay? If you uh, want a little bit more pressure, again, wrap that foot on. If you want less pressure, don't push your bottom up. Okay, so I'm pushing up on my hand, so my weight is going straight down into my calf. You just keep down and just work along the side. If you find a spot that is very tender, feel free and sit into that and just put pressure on it for a couple seconds, really moving side to side. You wanna stop right below the bottom of the kneecap. And then if you're working on the inside, let's flip on to the outside. And just go side to side, slowly work your way down. Don't hold your breath here. Keep breathing. Just really taking our time in this. Should be a little good pain, I should say. Feels so, it hurts so good. If you find a spot, just sit in it side to side. We're gonna spend about 20 more seconds on the calf, and we're gonna move up to the right glutes. Also, if you want to move your toe in and out, a little dorsi and plantar flexion. That was increase the intensity just a little bit. Hold for another five. All right, I'm gonna turn around because I realize this is easier. All right, now we're gonna move up to the glutes. So we we'll do the right glutes. So I'm gonna place it. Well, let's start at the uh, let's start at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna sit on it. So about the top here, right uh, below my low back, I'm gonna place the right side onto the roller. I'm gonna do the similar concept like I did with my calf. I'm gonna go side to side and work my way down any spot that I find that's tender, just sit into it a little bit longer. If you want a little bit more intense, cross that right leg over the left knee, like so. I'm just gonna roll it down towards my hamstring. And if you find a nice tender spot, just hold it.
Then go to the bottom of the butt. Feel free to turn it inside and then go right along the inside. Okay, should feel a little more on the outside. If you want to hit that outside, we'll spend about 30 more seconds on this right glute. Again, a little more intense right here is just cross that right knee over or right foot over the left knee. Just really grind into it. Also, if you want to increase intensity, go to the corner of the foam roller. Find it to be a little bit more effective. Go another 15 seconds here before we get to the other calf. All right, last five seconds here. Enjoy this. This right glute. And all right, relax. Let's switch it out into onto the left calf. So again, I'm going to start on the outside, the little soleus right here. Go slowly and then come back into the inside of the other calf. Spend about a minute or two here on this calf, probably about two minutes here on this calf. Take it nice and slow here. Get more intense is crossing your foot over, right foot over the left. You'll raise yourself up a little bit too. And again, if you want to take your foot, flex it towards you and extend it out, that'll also help. Don't forget to breathe here. Feel the burn. Again, the good pain right here should hurt, but also feel kind of good. Rolling over into the inside of the old calf. I'm just going to come down. Again, stopping in any tight spots. You know, 30 seconds here, if you have any good juicy spots like myself, I'm just gonna sit into it for another 20 seconds or so. Then we'll move up to the glutes and then finish with a little mid back and then we are out of here. All right, last five seconds here on this left calf. And time, let's move on up to that left glute here. So again, if you want a little more intense, I like to sit on the outside of the foam roller so you can kind of see that I'm sitting on this end here. I'm gonna start on the top. I like to cross my foot over. This is just a little bit more. Starting at the top right under the low back and I'm just gonna go down on that whole outside here. Just keep rolling, finding the tender spot. We'll spend about a minute and a half here. You need to breathe. Go all the way down to your butt bone and then bring it right back up. You know, like 45 seconds or so here on this left glute. Great work, everyone. In the 20 seconds or so, we're gonna finish with the lower mid back release. All right, last five seconds here. And relax. All right, so last but not least, we're going to our mid back. So I'm going to uh, laid back on this. I'm going to take my hands, okay? I'm going to start like this, elbows out wide. I'm going to bring them in nice and tight, okay? Right below the, uh, go to the middle of the back, and we're going to roll up right below the shoulder blades. So I'm going to lift my hips up, okay? And slowly roll down, actually right above the shoulder blade, uh, right around the shoulder blades. Okay, right in that mid-back, maybe get some cracks. 
go right to where the silver dice are and then just go right down, just roll that out. Make sure we're breathing here. We're going to like 15 seconds or so here. Get all those muscles right there. Make sure you're holding your neck as well. Last five seconds here. And time. This last one, the T-spine is very good if you're sitting at a computer a lot. Okay, it's important to get those shoulders back. This will help get the blood flowing in there, help with that posture, keep it nice and up. All right, that is all that I have for y'all. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, let me know. I uh, can't recommend Dr. Matthew Walker's book or podcast enough. It was very uh, life-changing. And everybody that I know that has, that has read or listened to it could agree. Work plus rest equals success. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Hope you have a fantastic day. If you're in San Diego, enjoy the sun.